Good morning everyone and happy Vlogmas Day 3. It is Sunday and it is an action-packed day. This morning I have a ton of work to do before uh, we head off to our adventure this afternoon. We're actually heading to the Smithsonian Zoo down in DC. But before that I wanted to get a video filmed but I have a giant mess to clean off of my desk. So I'm gonna get started on that and probably set up a little time lapse so you guys can get a sneak peek at how bad this is. <laughs> Um, but I'll catch up with you guys once I'm done doing my work this morning. If you guys have not been watching for a while, I have a video up from a couple years ago of me making this gift. It's a ticket box, so it's a shadow box that I decorated the background of for all the tickets my boyfriend and I have accumulated. So we have a bunch in there, and now we're going to put in our ones that we got from Thanksgiving. We went home for Thanksgiving, and we went and saw Justice League, so go ahead and open it up. And every time we see a movie or an event, we just drop them in. So this time we have a lot, because everybody went with us. So they just pile up. Since we are heading out to our adventures soon, I'm going to pack my backpack. Um, we always bring a backpack down when we go to DC since we usually walk around a lot and need to carry all of our stuff with us so we don't have to go back to the car. This one's an Adidas backpack. I hope you can see that. Um, it's really big, probably bigger than we need, but we usually like to use that. So we usually bring our waters. We don't like paying for water, <laughs> so we always bring water bottles. Um, things like ibuprofen, just in case, my purse and wallet, I usually don't like it. Sometimes I carry these, sometimes I don't, it depends. Right now it's just going to go inside. Um, my purse, like I said, although I need to keep this out because my keys are in it. And this purse is actually from Walmart. It's like a saddlebag sort of purse. It's only $3. I don't really care for it. And we also need snacks. Thank you. You want Yeah. Always need snacks. Got the Cheez Its. And we'll also have the uh, external charger. We have our cable in the car to charge our phones as well, so that's already in there. And then his glasses. Always need those as well. And then when I pack my DSLR, I usually will have one of our coats as extras. So this is my other coat. So if I grab my lenses and my actual camera. So right now I have my Let's see, my 55 to 255 millimeter lens on, but I also have my kit lens because I like to have options. So typically I'll put the camera on top of whatever's in the largest pocket, but I always wrap them up since you never know. It's just nicer to have them with soft things than with dangerous things. And then my other lens will also go in there as well. And then the other jacket, more padding. I'm wearing my sweater. In case you guys are wondering, this sweater is by the brand Kim Rogers, or designer I should say. But I picked this up at, what's that store called? Herb Philipson's maybe? It was on clearance for $5 and it's the best sweater ever. It's really thick and it's a maroon color, which I like. My shirt today is from Old Navy, jeans from Old Navy. My sneakers will be from New Balance, in case you're wondering. There's my outfit of the day as well. So once the bag's all packed up, which you're probably forgetting something as usual, um, that's pretty much it though. Sometimes we pack more snacks, always extra snacks. We just finally found a parking spot. Parking is awful in DC, but now we're walking to lunch, which is really close to the zoo. So hopefully it's not too long now before we get there. Parked a little far away, but we're getting some mileage in. Is that right? Yes. Okay. See you guys later. Oh. 
We finished up a delicious brunch slash lunch at Lily's, which is just a block away from the zoo. And now we are here, ready to experience all the adorable animals. So cue a adorable montage of animals now. He's just kind of stuck. Oh, oh he's waving. Oh, yeah. That's good. How do I get down? Yeah, it's really stuck. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Mickey to me. Like his ears. We just finished up the Asian trail. Now we're back at the beginning of the zoo, so now we gotta find a different one. What's your favorite animal so far? Um, pandas? Yeah, I like the pandas. Giant pandas were really cute, especially the giant panda. That's the one that was in the tree. And eating the bamboo, I believe. They're all eating bamboo at some point, so. Now we're on to the next one, right? Yes. We have to leave this stroller You do, yes. Are you excited to meet a zebra? Yeah. Look at their stuff. Hey guys, give me two minutes okay. and then I'll call you to come on up. Perfect. Okay, okay we have to count. Hi. What's his name? This is Moyo. That's a cool name. I'm jealous. So Moyo means heart and if you look at that, like right in his chest, he's got that little heart yeah. marking. That's what he's named after. Ah, cool. You're cutie. Hi! So Moyo is a Grevy Zebra. Grevy Zebras are critically endangered. There's less than 2,500 of these guys left in the wild. They live in one preserve in Kenya. So here at the National Zoo, we work with all American Zoological Association institutions in a species survival program. So, there is one person in the country that's in charge of all Grevy Zebras. They run a stud book for them, and uh, they will make breeding recommendations for these guys and we'll send them off to another park or a bachelor holding facility here because we don't have a ton of space or solitude. So we'll hold males until they get a breeding recommendation then we'll send them to another institution to make more grevy zebras. Uh, grevy zebras, like I said, are critically endangered. They're, uh, oh, sorry buddy. They're a very aggressive species of zebra. So these guys are about one of the most aggressive animals that you'll get to work with or that we'll get to work with. Uh, they live individually, they don't live in herds like you may think of zebras. That's one of the reasons why they are so aggressive. So they're, they live individually, so they have to protect themselves and their offspring from things like lions, right? So these guys can take on lions. They're one of the few animals that you see on the savanna that can do that. Uh, you know, they'll get taken out by lions. The number one pressure on these guys in the wild right now is lion predation. They are, might not be... There might be more lions per capita than these guys really evolved to handle because everybody's been smushed onto such, such small areas. So, Grevy zebras, tough animal, very territorial. They could take on lions, but they also get taken out by lions. Um, weighs about 800 pounds, it can run about 30 miles an hour. 
These guys are, like I said, a very formidable animal. You know, we've got them here next to this cheetah and these main wolves, but the zebra is not concerned at all about these predators around them. In fact, it's exactly the other way around. Uh, Moyo would smush these cheetahs and main wolves into almost nothing if they were ever to get together. You guys. Who are main wolves? Main wolves are these guys right here. Where's their habitat? These guys are actually from Brazil, and they're like, you could think of these guys as rainforest wolves. They live in the grasslands. The reason why we have them up here in Africa Trails, uh, because of the animals that we work with right in this area, are animals that we highlight at our SCBI conservation facility out in Front Royal. So about two hours down Route 66, we've got 20 square miles where we breed a lot of the animals. So like I said, here we're generally a bachelor holding facility. So the grevy zebras and the, the wolves and the cheetahs, we've got all males. Uh, we breed them at our facility out at Front Royal because we have more solitude, really. So, so uh, just make sure you don't touch that fence, buddy. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we want these guys to raise their offspring to fruition, and that's why we raise them out at SCBI in Front Royal. It's a little bit quieter there, and, uh, and we have more luck with that actually happening. If we have to step in here and raise these guys, um, and we don't let the parents rear their offspring, we tend to have more of an issue with them producing that next successive generation. And the whole thing we're here for is to keep a healthy, happy, or excuse me, a healthy captive population in the United States so that we can use it for, you know, uh, scientific research, because a lot of these animals are disappearing. Yes? Does he let you come near him? No, not at all. So this is a very, very dangerous animal. So if you have got, you can't be in an enclosure with them. Absolutely not, right? These guys are responsible for the second most injuries of any animal that's kept in, in zoos, oh right? Oh my God. Grebbies are a very serious animal. Yep, yeah. and that's why we do this demonstration, right? So I get to show you guys Moyo and we get to talk about Moyo, but it also helps us reinforce the training that we need to help, you know, keep us. So this is a target pole right here, and this is how we, you know, move him to the side of an exhibit. You notice that I make sure that he's touching his nose to the tip of this before I bridge him and give him a reward. So I can bring him here to talk to you guys, but if I was worried that he was hurt or something overnight or something happened to him, I can use this to bring him over to the side and show, the, show him off to the vets. You know, we can show him both sides. And uh, that way we wouldn't have to anesthetize him to do a quick examination, which you know we can do if we have to. We have a 24 hour vet staff around here. And if we need to take care of these animals, they're actually all on a schedule of being uh, knocked down to have complete workups done on them. But we would rather do that on a schedule and not have to do it. So Why is he, what is he saying when he's throwing his head like that? He's probably looking around and, you know, maybe showing a little bit of annoyance. I mean, you know, these are not flock animals. These guys only live, yeah, grevy zebras are, are individual animals. They're not like what you might think of a common or a plain zebras where you'll see them in herds. These guys, you'll only see them individually, right? So we used to have two males here because um, we're a bachelor holding facility and they're, they don't like each other, right? They're very territorial. They're always concerned with what's going on. You'll notice his ears are always on a swivel. His eyes are on the side of his head. Helps him get a nice big peripheral vision of what's going on. These guys are a prey species and they're very, very, very aware. You notice he's concerned with all of you guys. This guy, he's tough, but he's also flighty and very skittish, you know? So you saw that there's no strollers or umbrellas allowed up here. Umbrellas ruin this guy's day. He sees an umbrella, he's done. He's not gonna cooperate for anything. Yeah, what's your question? When you throw the food, when mm -hmm. you throw the food to eat, it can eat the sun. Well, no, you know what? So that we have special sand that it's tough for him to eat, right? So that's definitely one of our concerns. Um, so yeah, and you see how many whiskers he has on the front of his nose? That's so he can feel really well what's going on there on the ground so he doesn't get too much sand. But that's a very good question and concern. So we get special sand that's hard for them to get impacted with. And then this guy in particular, we don't necessarily have that problem with him. But there are other zebras that we do have that problem with. What's your, you have a question, buddy? He does, you see all those whiskers on the end of his nose, right? So that's how he can feel on the ground, just like a hand, to feel for the right type of food. What do you feel? So he eats mostly gra uh, grass and pellet, right? So these guys are broad-based grazers, like a horse or a donkey. So they're eating a whole bunch of food very quickly. They're not necessarily chewing it or processing it very well. So if you see these guys droppings, you know, you can actually see pieces of grass in it. So they eat a lot, process it quickly. Unlike an antelope, 
you know, that we have in the front, which will pick out individual leaves, really chew them well, really process all that food, and so you look at their droppings and they'll look, you know, completely black. It will, you won't see any grass or anything in this. Do you put them in the barn at night? Yes, these guys do go inside at night, so uh, really, um, because it's cold, right? So these guys, I think that their temperature is 40 degrees. So once it's 40 degrees outside, we're giving them access to heat and locking them in. Do you actually have heat in this? We do. Uh, we have a barn back here. Everybody's got heated stalls. We've got sensors. That's one of our big concerns here. Thank How you. you Persuade him to sure. come in. So uh, we shift them, right? So he's got a cowbell that he knows means food, and so he's got some attitude today. Um, so th we do this stuff with the bridge, right? So this is a bridge, right? This is like saying good dog, right? But because we have so many people that train every animal. We need to be consistent, we all click the same way. Um, so once we charge a bridge, which means that we make the association with him between this clicking sound and food, we can use that bridge to pull out other behaviors on this guy. So shifting and targeting are the main things that we do for these guys. Yeah, we gotta keep you on that side. Uh, so shifting and targeting are the main things that we do for these guys. Because you want any more, buddy? Said, yeah, we don't want to feed you to a zebra, right? You don't want to get. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh. Are we about done for today? Uh, one more time? You want to try once more? Boy. All right, so it looks like we're about wrapping up. Anybody have any questions before we call the demo for today? No, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we appreciate you all coming out. Enjoy the rest of your day here at the zoo. Thank you. Bye, buddy. We got so lucky to go see that zebra. Yes, we did. He was Bonjour. really... He was aggressive, like they said, but he was also... He followed the rules. He touched his nose like he was supposed to. And he got his treats just like he was supposed to. Yes, he's a good dog. It's the closest I've ever been to a zebra. Me too. Ever. Definitely. Most animals ever. Uh -huh. Except, like, common animals. And some stingrays. And such like that. <laughs> but it was really cool. Hi, little friend. I'll let Sam have the photography covered today since I'm vlogging. You gonna take a picture of me while I'm vlogging you? That's a lot. That's enough. <laughs> now we're finished with the North American Trail and we're moving on to the Amazonian area. Should be very tropical, but I think the bird exhibit's closed because of maintenance, so I'm not sure which animals will be here. Especially since we didn't get a map, which is probably a very poor choice. The... Oh. Okay, so we're almost done. We're gonna head out the monkeys, take a right, past some kind of lizard thing, a gorilla, maybe a fox, and could be a horse. And we're about done. We're gonna head right to the exit, and hopefully, we'll make it in time for those who like us. this large in my life. I don't think you really compare what size they are. There's a small child. see we are back at the apartment now my phone ran out of storage while we were at the zoo but I borrowed my boyfriend's phone to get some more footage now we are prepping some dinner we have some leftover ziti and we're making some garlic bread so that should be good um, we're gonna catch up on some more TV we have to watch so the good doctor you've missed a couple episodes now we're gonna watch that with dinner and I'm working on editing some of this footage since I have so many videos from the zoo as you probably already saw and uh, I'll catch you guys up later about some other things.
But for now, I want to remind you that if you haven't watched yesterday's day two of Vlogmas, I'm doing one of the first giveaways of Vlogmas this year. So let me check out day two. You have a couple more days to enter to win the giveaway, and I don't want you guys to miss it. So other than that, that's pretty much what's happening for the rest of the tonight, an easygoing Sunday. I might do some crafting later. I'm not 100% sure. It depends how I'm feeling. But that's the update for now. It is a couple hours since I last updated you before dinner. There was a giant iPhone photo mishap, but everything's good. All the photos are good. It was a mess, but it's okay. Now it's time for the annual advent calendar opening. Today is December 3rd. So today was a wild day, as you know. We did the zoo. It was wild. Obviously, it's a zoo. And today's chocolate is Pluto. Not that you can really tell, but it is. I'll eat that after, but um, today was really fun. Today's comment of the day is to let me know what your favorite animal is. I know we saw a lot today. I did a lot of montage, but let me know what your favorite animal is in the comments down below. And don't forget that if you haven't seen yesterday's Vlogmas video, day two, you're missing out on entering the giveaway. It's open internationally, so definitely go check that out. Be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And definitely more giveaways to come as a sneak peek. I did get some suggestions on things to do for Vlogmas, so you'll see those up and coming soon. So thank you guys so much for watching day three, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow for day four.